If you're working towards 1,000 subscribers, but you're still miles away from that target, and you're feeling demotivated, well, it's time to pick yourself up, dust yourself down, and go again. Come on. Now then, hey folks, I'm Rob. Welcome back to vidIQ, educating you on your YouTube journey. And today's lesson is all about, well, learning a whole bunch of things about your YouTube channel. Because you see, here's the thing. I'm a YouTube educator, and there are many other educators out there who do a fantastic job. But I bet we all share in this particular YouTube comment. Hello, vidIQ team. I'm very demotivated sometimes because I follow all of your steps, but I'm not receiving good results. My YouTube channel is not growing. And then you take one look at their channel and you think to yourself, hang on, they haven't done anything that we've suggested. Yes, it's a flippant remark. I think it's born out of frustration, but we all internally keep it wrapped up inside of ourselves as educators and it slowly drives us mad. But today I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take an objective look at a channel that has posted such a comment on one of our videos. By no means is this just me roasting a random channel through pent up frustration over this repeating comment. On the contrary, you might consider this a mini channel audit. So what I recommend you do if it's possible, is load up a second screen with your channel so that as we're auditing this channel, you can apply those fundamentals onto your channel. The channel we are looking at today is Freelance Community. As of time of recording, they have around about 250 subscribers and they have no idea I'm doing this. So let's dive in. I think the best way to approach this is as if I am visiting this channel for the first time and I'm trying to work out if I'm in the right place. So let's introduce the channel Freelance Community. This is their homepage. And right off the bat, I can say that yes, this channel is doing something that we suggest, which is to create a channel banner, which helps explain their channel. Freelance Community feels a little bit vague as perhaps a target audience, but they do say they're about web designing. And there's also an icon, I presume, of maybe some sort of web development program. But I do feel as if there's a missed opportunity here with the value proposition. When somebody encounters your work on YouTube, be it through your channel or your thumbnail, they want to know as instantly as possible if they're in the right place and it's the type of stuff that they would want to watch. I think we have the what here, but do we have the who? Is this channel for hobbyists? Is it for professionals? Is it for somewhere in between? And why should I watch this content? My assumption is, is because you're going to help a certain level of web designer get from point A to point B. And that should form your value proposition. Now, the profile image is very plain. That could just be a stock image from somewhere. It doesn't really depict your web designing skills at all. Along with your channel name, it's very generic. Freelance community. But for who? Without the context of a channel, if, say, I saw you commenting on somebody else's video and I saw the channel name Freelance Community, I would have no idea what your channel was about. Now, that's not to say that your channel name and your profile image is going to make or break your YouTube success, but any opportunity you have to communicate to your audience who you are, you should take advantage of. Let's have a look at the uh, channel description now because we're having to dig a little deeper into information about your channel to work out who you are. And you say that you will help to learn the secret of WordPress and working online. So that does reveal a little bit more specifically about who you are on this channel. Having said that though, I'm not sure if this is actually the truth because when I go to your videos, I look at the thumbnails and the titles very quickly. I see no mention of WordPress whatsoever. So maybe that was going to be the focus of your channel at some point, but it no longer is. What I do see throughout all of the titles, and it probably links back up to this icon. I apologize. I'm not familiar with web design. I'm just joining the dots here. It looks as if you are a tutorial channel about Elementor, a particular type of web design tool possibly for WordPress. Okay then, so now we have something more concrete to work with on your channel. And my creative neurons are already firing in terms of perhaps a new channel name. And these are only suggestions, but how about Elementor Educator or Elementor, my dear Watson? Yeah, 
thought you'd like that one. As for a value proposition that describes who you are in a couple of words, I came up very quickly with the idea of web building for your career. I'm sure if you put more thought into it, you could come up with something really quirky and memorable. So I think after a little bit of research, we now get the channel messaging. But is that supported by the content itself? Well, I'm pleased to say here that once again, Freelance Community is doing what we suggest, and that is to find a channel focus and make sure you stick to it. You're not jumping onto any other radical topics here. It's all fundamentally about teaching viewers how to use different aspects of Elementor tutorial, which is brilliant. So now that we have the channel focus, maybe we can do a little bit of research on YouTube to find out what other channels are doing on this particular topic. This can start as something as simple as a YouTube search. So all I'm gonna do, because this is an educational channel, I believe I'm gonna type in how to Ellie mentor. And just from the suggestions here on the autocomplete YouTube search bar, this gives me a ton of ideas that I could potentially play with on this. I'm just gonna now insert this as the actual search term. And then we're gonna to start to look at the videos themselves. And already, just from the thumbnails, nothing else, I'm starting to see a certain styling. And that is a kind of purple gradient into blue. And I think that fits the theme of the product itself. So this might be something that you could consider adopting in your thumbnails to uh, fit the brand, so to speak, the style of thumbnails. What I'm also noticing here is through the timestamps, a lot of these videos are actually very, very long. We're looking at an hour and a half, 30 minutes. Wow, three hour one here, one a little shorter at 11 minutes. So that seems to suggest to me that when creators make Elementor tutorials, they're doing full guides. And so you as a creator may want to consider that. When I go back to your channel, I think you do very specific tutorials on certain parts of Elementor, such as you know the blurry sticky head of it, text path widgets and the gradient button. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Your videos are a lot shorter, so that could be of a certain advantage. What I would suggest with this is that you embrace the idea. If you're going to do shorter tutorials, then tell somebody that they can create a counter widget in just three minutes from your channel, as opposed to spending half an hour on somebody's full guide. That could be your unique selling point, positioning yourself uh, in a little niche in this Elementor tutorial video topic space. Now, let's just say you decide to position yourself as the channel on YouTube that will teach you how to use Elementor faster than anyone else. So you're doing quick fire videos, five minutes or less. Let's do some research on this. What you can do in the YouTube search filters is look at videos under four minutes. And when I see the videos here, I'm encouraged by the fact that there are videos with lots of views, but some of these videos are very old. Elementor Website Builder channel made these videos four years ago. Uh, there's another one here which is 11 months ago, four years ago, two years ago. All of these videos are ranking very highly in search. So I'm curious, surely there's been some significant updates to how to use Elementor in that time. Could you essentially remake these videos with just updated information that means that if a viewer watches this video here and thinks, ah, all of this has changed, the setup, the screens are completely different, but now you're moving into that space with updated videos that can really help. We did exactly the same thing when uh, YouTube updated the Creator Studio. We made tons of tutorials about how to do things that had significantly changed because of the updates. And we find ourselves now at the top of the search rankings for strange things like how to delete a YouTube video, how to add a playlist, how to create subtitles. All right then, here we go again. Inevitably, whenever we do channel audits, we end up in one place, which is often a blocker for many creators, and that is thumbnails. So freelance community, have you applied 
many of the strategies that we've suggested in our videos with your thumbnails. Yeah, let's take a look at that. I try to pick a video that is similar to yours in terms that it looks at a particular aspect of Elementor and that is counter widgets. So we see this video here and we're going to have a look at the channel in a little bit more detail later, but that's their thumbnail. So does your thumbnail look anywhere near what we're kind of seeing throughout all of these search results for uh, counter widgets? No, not really. Let's be honest. You are making custom thumbnails. That's a good thing. But your custom thumbnails right now are somewhat chaotic. Let me explain what I mean by this. I'm going to choose this video, Star Rating Widgets in Elementor, which you explain in two minutes, which is really cool. Uh, VidIQ has this tool here, which allows you to view a thumbnail full screen. Now, I imagine that when you're creating your thumbnail, you design it on a big screen. But the problem is 99% of viewers won't see your thumbnail at this screen. They'll see it at a postage stamp size and it loses a lot of its clarity as a small thumbnail. But even at this big size, you're trying to emphasize a star rating widget. And where is that star rating? I think it's around about here, but I've had to use a magnifying glass on a blown up thumbnail and it's taken me 10 seconds to do that. You've already lost me as a potential viewer. So this is why the thumbnail is so important. As way of a comparison, I want to go back to the other channel we saw with a thumbnail about Elementor counter widgets. And this is their channel as a whole. And I feel as if they're in the same space as our channel that we're looking at here. But look at the difference in thumbnails. They're using a color branding on all of their thumbnails. I think text when it's used is better used and they have a big blown up illustration of what they're trying to build rather than the entire website. Don't get me wrong, there's still improvements that could be made to these thumbnails, but just by way of a quick comparison, if this channel made exactly the same video as the freelance community channel, which thumbnail would you rather click on? And that's where you're potentially losing a lot of your audience in the pitch of your video through the thumbnail. Me personally, I'm going for the GWiz Academy with every single thumbnail. My challenge to you, the creator, is to simplify this thumbnail at least 50%. So less text when it's used, emphasized more. And most importantly, don't try and put the entire website within the thumbnail. Whatever object you're talking about, you're building, making, maintaining, improving, focus on that. In this case, the counter widget and nothing else. Now let's move on to the titles. And this creator is in somewhat of a unique position because they have dual language titles in English and Urdu, presumably Urdu, as that's what's mentioned in the thumbnail. Now, instinctively, this seems like uh, not a particularly good idea as it may not necessarily help YouTube's recommendation system to serve up your content to the right audience. Because is it in English? Is it in Urdu? When I sort by most popular, the videos that have just English titles seem to perform better purely on view count. Think for the titles themselves, you should choose one language or the other. Now, just in case you weren't aware of this, you can translate your titles and descriptions into other languages. You would go to video details and then subtitles and then add a language. And so in this case, I'm going to go down to uh, Urdu and add that and then add the title and description. VidIQ does have an additional tool here where it will automatically translate the title and the description, but you would usually do this ma uh, manually. So now, if I publish this video, if a user has set their YouTube account to Urdu in their language, then they would see this title instead of this title. So that's just an extra bonus tip uh, to help you with language translation. Now, as for the titles themselves, from what I can read, they're a little generic and boring. 
progress bar in Elementor, counter widget in Elementor, icon list widget in Elementor. It's always something in Elementor. I think that's fine for the search aspect of a title, but how can you spice it up? Clarify what you're doing. Is it how to build, make, delete, maintain, improve a progress bar widget in Elementor? And add a bit of spice, such as in under five minutes for free. Right now, your titles are functional and they would be absolutely fine as file names in a folder on a computer, but not as YouTube titles. You want to add emotional intrigue. Get the viewer to wonder what's inside this thumbnail and title by having something really enticing and winning that click. You know what? In this case, I would actually agree with the creator. They are trying many of the things that YouTube educators suggest on their channel. The execution isn't quite there yet, and that's absolutely fine because just like many of you, this creator is at the beginning of their YouTube journey. They still have a lot to learn, and they've got all the time in the world to learn it if they choose to pursue YouTube. When it comes to YouTube being tough, I'm with you all the way. It can be a huge challenge and at times very demotivating. But let's have a look at some of the good signals for this channel. In four months, they've made 25 videos. They've got 250 subscribers, almost a thousand views, and some of their videos have already hit triple digits. Those are milestones to celebrate. You have proven that people will watch your content. And even from a single video, you're getting so much positivity and encouragement in the comments. We as creators are all on this YouTube journey together. And because of that, I'd like you all to share the three Ps in the comments below to encourage anybody watching this video. Passion, persistence, patience. Oh, and if you have already made all of these improvements to your channel and it's still not growing, then maybe it's the videos themselves, in which case this is definitely worth a watch.